Hello viewers and listeners, and welcome to a very special episode of Uncommon Sense. My name is Joe Grabowski. I'm the Vice President of Evangelization and Mission here at the Society of G.K. Chesterton. In this Christmas season, as we reflect in gratitude on all of the good things that God has given us, most especially the gift of His own Divine Son, we thank God for the gift of G.K. Chesterton. You'll hear from several voices from the Chesterton Society today about the difference Chesterton has made in their lives. This, of course, is the driving force behind the Society of G.K. Chesterton. We've received this wonderful man as a witness to us, as a guide, as a friend, and we seek to share him with others because uh, with him we want to lead others to the gospel of Jesus Christ and his saving, saving message. We hope you enjoy this very special episode and that you're having a very merry and blessed Christmas. God bless. I'm Nancy Carpentier-Brown with the Society of Gilbert Keith Chesterton. Although I believe that Chesterton's writing is amazing and fantastic, and I never get tired of reading him, it's actually his private life that intrigues me the most. And it's in his private life where his sainthood will eventually be found. By his fruits ye shall know him. I was curious about his wife and researched her life in a certain way to get to know Gilbert better and to find out what made their marriage tick. In another way, I was also looking to find an example of goodness that I could emulate in my own life. I learned by reading biographies and in my research on Francis that the Chestertons were generous souls. People who invited others into their homes, no matter if they were intellectual enemies, who nonetheless were friends, such as H.G. Wells and his wife Amy, or George Bernard Shaw and his wife Charlotte, or friend friends, such as Hilaire Belloc and his wife Elodie, or Father John O'Connor, the model of Father Brown. The spirit of hospitality pervaded their home in Beaconsfield. They described an open door, an open hearth, and an ever-present welcome. I could tell from these examples that the Chestertons had a real and serious faith life. They sought humility and innocence. They considered all others brothers and sisters in Christ. And they both had an abundance of charity, love. They truly loved their neighbors. At first, on the surface, it may appear that the Chestertons lived a charmed life. He was famous. They met lots of people. It was easy to go to dinners and parties and to invite people back. We might assume they had no money worries because again, he was famous. They had access. He was a star. He had fans. The newspapers fawned over them and quoted them. After reading more in depth though, I realized this wasn't really the case. First of all, this fame never went to their heads. They both remained humble and innocent. Plus, they suffered. They never had children. They both had constant illnesses. Gilbert was, as his wife Frances and their friend Father O'Connor thought, wasting his talent on journalism and newspapers when he could be writing great biographies, great novels, and even greater poetry. Gilbert and Francis became real people to me because my own life has been filled with joy, yes, but sorrows and disappointments too. And Chesterton taught me that joy, rather than being a momentary passing emotion, was supposed to be the gigantic secret of Christianity. And so what I've tried to learn from Gilbert is joy. I often worry I fret. I'm anxious about things like Martha. I seek explanations and try to help, which is like Job's friends, El El Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. I look back on my past and I want to blame. I feel sorry for myself sometimes. I find excuses for my lack of faith. I relate to the older brother who stayed home and obeyed his father 
but was jealous of the love the father bestowed on that runaway younger brother. When sorrow pierced my heart, I felt I had a right to depression, a right to seek attention. I learned from Chesterton that everyone has sorrows, everyone has worries, and no one leads a charmed life and has everything go their way. If they persecuted Christ, they will persecute us if we follow him. But we, like Daniel, will be saved from our persecutors by the love of God and by our love of God. Joy is a very good thing to think about during Christmas tide because every good thing in life comes from God and from the incarnation, the coming of Christ on earth as a little baby. I hope and pray Chesterton can bring you joy this Advent and Christmas. God bless you. As many of you know, I'm Gretel and Darkey, co-host of Uncommon Sense at the Society of Gilbert Keith Chesterton. Um, talking about the gift of Chesterton to me is sort of a huge thing <laughs> because G.K. Chesterton is directly responsible for so many of the gifts in my life, um, right down to my three beautiful children. <laughs> that might sound extreme, but it's also very true. Uh, I first found Chesterton when I was in college. I, it was a very dark time for me. I had separated myself from the church. I was coming from a rough home. I had a lot of wounds, a lot of uh, anger and bitterness. Um, I wasn't seeing the world in a very bright way. And a friend of mine who I trusted to give me good recommendations on literature <laughs> said, you got to read this, this Chesterton guy. I just read this amazing book, The Man Who Was Thursday. You're going to love it. You got to go read this. So I went to the library and I looked for The Man Who Was Thursday and that friend had it checked out. <laughs> so I went and found another book by GKC. And I remember reading it and thinking, this is really weird. I don't think I like this because I wasn't used to sort of the over-the-top style that Chesterton had. But I had a policy back then of giving books that were that old, <laughs> authors that were written like 100 years ago or more or less, um, at least one chapter before I put the book away. And I got to the end of the chapter and being G.K. Chesterton, he, he wrapped it up and tied it all together so cleverly and so wonderfully that I thought, I have to read everything this guy has ever written. <laughs> and luckily for me, the place where I went to college had um, one of the bigger, bigger collections of Chesterton probably in the country. So I was able to just chew through all sorts of Chesterton through college. Um, and while I was still in college, I uh, found my local Chesterton Society which at that time was like over an hour drive away, but it was as local as it was going to get at that point. And I met Vicki Darkey, who um, still is the coordinator of that local society. Uh, and she became one of my best friends, still is, maybe, I don't know, five, six years later, I met her son. <laughs> Um, and a few years after that, we got married and, um, now we have three kids. So I, I literally can thank GK Chesterton, um, for my family, uh, for a lot of healing in my life, for the ability to see wonder and joy in the world around me again. And I am so incredibly thankful and blessed to be able to bring Chesterton to more people and hopefully uh, give that gift of Chesterton that he was to me that changed my life so profoundly, brought me back to my faith, um, helped me find my family, really did so much for me. So thank you, GKC. Uh, thank you, God, for the gift of Chesterton. Hi, I'm Susan Sutcher, columnist for Gilbert and local society coordinator. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Chesterton has been a gift to me in many ways. First of all, the friendships, 
Local societies across the country have welcomed me throughout the years, and these local societies have been a place to meet the most interesting people, the most diverse people who are interested in finding the truth, uh, people who have supported me, people who have prayed with me, people who have challenged me, people who have helped me to see myself and the world that I live in more clearly. And I found within these groups an opportunity to share the joy of gratitude which Chesterton has given me in my life. Of course, Chesterton has also inspired me in my the gift of my vocation as a wife and a mother. Chesterton has helped me see the joy in the little things, the joy in doing the task that no one sees, the joy in being a mother to some amazing children and to really appreciate the larger impact of that most important work. Chesterton saw, I think, not despite his genius, but because of it, that these roles that we play in the domestic sphere are the ones that affect everybody more than anything. So I'm grateful for his ability to explain that so clearly and to inspire me to be the best that I can in this most important but little work. He let me know that things that are worth doing are worth doing badly, which is great for me <laughs> because we all see the littleness and the smallness of our efforts. We see how we fall short and he helps me to see that, you know, God can use us and I think he must use the amateur. So thanks be to God for Chesterton explaining how we can put the home at the center of our lives and by nurturing those within, we create a larger impact on the world outside of our walls. But most importantly, Chesterton has affected my relationship with God. His really reflections on gratitude have helped me through very difficult times, even as I walk through the serious illness and recovery of my youngest child. Gratitude for creation, for other people, and for the wild gift of the Creator seems to be the, at the heart of Chesterton's spirituality, and his example has led to peace and joy in my life. Difficulties still arise, as they must in this fallen world, but the profound gratitude for the gift of human life I have discovered through Chesterton has led to peace and joy that affects all areas of my life. Chesterton saw the beauty of the paradox of the creator of the universe made incarnate in a small, poor baby in Bethlehem. His gift to all of us this Christmas is wonder and gratitude and joy at the wild adventure of life. The beauty of the incarnation and the gift of one another as we celebrate the joy of this season. Merry Christmas. How did you first discover Chesterton? Um, how, how I came to Chesterton? Uh, I didn't grow up in a very religious house. Well, I didn't, there was no religion in my house. Uh, my dad was an atheist, my mom was agnostic. Uh, and as a young man, a uh, very young boy, I had a very mystical um, experience that I, um, I don't like to talk about, um, that I don't share with many people, but it opened a door to uh, a thought uh, a belief that there was a God, but I didn't know how that worked. Um, and so I, I began searching. And um, I had grown up reading the Chronicles of Narnia. I still do uh, every once in a while. And so I was familiar with C.S. Lewis, and I was reading his, his books. And um, there was one book called Surprised by Joy. And in the introduction of that book, uh, it mentions that uh, G.K. Chesterton had a huge impact on him. And I thought, well, who's, who's G.K. Chesterton? I mean, if I'm searching via C.S. Lewis's perspective and words, and this guy had an impact on him, I, I probably should read him. And I think it was a couple months later, I was watching this 1970s version of uh, Father Brown, and in the credits, Father Brown stories based on the books of G.K. Chesterton. And so then uh, I went to the library, and um, I picked up Orthodoxy as my first book. And, uh, yeah, that, that was the introduction that is still going on to this day. How did the gift of Chesterton change your life? Um, well, <laughs> pl 
playing him certainly makes you spend a lot of time in his head and in his words. Um, but it was long before I ever thought I was ever gonna play Chesterton. I was just uh, doing the readings for my own spiritual journey. Um, I, growing up, I came from a really dark place uh, where there wasn't much hope and um, there wasn't much um, optimism. Uh, and in that space, uh, I always felt that I was unworthy of God's love, uh, that I was from a place where God doesn't waste his time. Um, and it was a very strange relationship, you know, to have. Uh, we had a church in our town um, that they, in those days, they left the church unlocked. And it was this huge, beautiful church. It, was, it looked like a Gothic like castle. And at night, after I finished hanging out with my friends, I would, I would drive over there and I would just sit in there by myself, um, you know, at midnight or whatever, and talk to God, trying to figure out what I had to do to be worthy of his love and, and, um, and how I could get out of this dark place. Uh, and then Chesterton wrote something about, as I was reading his stuff, about um, it, God sends us love notes all the time in the dandelion, in the inchworm, in the stars above our heads that children see and marvel at because children are looking at something like they're looking at for the very first time. There's a whole universe inside their head. And I thought about if, if Chesterton's saying that all life is a gift from a, a loving giver and then we must be grateful for that. We have to assume an attitude of gratitude. And I began to think, well, if God is giving me this gift of this miraculous life I'm leading, even with some of its difficulties and darkness, he, he's not judging me. He's just, he loves me. And these gifts are, are proof of that, including my life. You know, what does Chesterton say? You can thank people for cigars and slippers on your birthday. Is there no one I can thank for the birthday gift of birth? So um, that softened me quite a bit and I began to realize that um, that my my life uh, was being loved through the entire experience um, by this divine giver of the great gift and that that really opened my head up to being able to move into my faith in a way that I hadn't before and that all came from Chesterton's writings yeah uh, how did Chesterton bring you closer to Christ well, it, it's kind of a tough one. <laughs> um, after I got to the place where I realized that if you're given a gift, you have to be grateful. So developing an attitude of gratitude was really important. Um, and I remember, you know, I, I, I didn't grow up Catholic. I wasn't confirmed in the church yet. I, had, I was married. I had two kids. Um, and I was sitting in the pew one day at Mass, and I remembered this one thing Chesterton wrote about, isn't it strange that the one good thing in life is a bad debt, and that that's a good thing? Because we have a debt to God that we can never pay back, and God doesn't care if we ever pay it back. And I looked down the pew and I saw my three kids, and they're all you know healthy and okay, and I'm looking at my wife who's still with me, and despite all the, you know, difficulties she had to put up with in my journey and who I was. And I realized I, I did have a debt. Uh, and I realized I needed to start paying back on that. So immediately after that, I came into the church and, um, and that attitude of gratitude started empowering everything I did in my faith life and in my journey with Christ. No longer was he judging me or making me feel unworthy. He was literally with love, writing the script of my life and just giving me the pages when I was ready to read them and ready to act. Um, it, he was driving the car, I was in the passenger seat and I could trust that and surrender to that because I knew he loved me. And that surrender means you're totally relying on, totally relying on God in your life. So, so. I, I guess that's how he brought me closer to Christ, and still is. So, that's it. The gift of Chesterton in my life um, really can't be overstated. Uh, it's really shaped the entire trajectory of my life. Uh, uh, in the least uh, way, my career, <laughs> uh, that I do this for a living, but really, in my day-to-day -day life, Chesterton has become a part of it. Uh, and Chesterton 
because he's a friend and guide who stands alongside me and helps me to look at the world, uh, to look at myself, to look at my fellow men, uh, and to look at God and his creation and his revelation um, in a different way, in a way that I wouldn't have arrived at um, on my own, or, or at least not without years and years of searching. Uh, Chesterton, at the very least, has been, if you will, a shortcut. Um, how Chesterton came into my life was really in an act of single conquest. Uh, it was one book, uh, as it is, uh, has been for so many others, the book Orthodoxy. Uh, when I picked that up, <clears throat> I was a committed Christian, certainly. I, I believed in uh, the gospel. I believed in uh, the saving message of Christ, but I wasn't necessarily um, settled in, in my faith, uh, leastways in, in you know my dedication to the Catholic Church. And as I read Orthodoxy, uh, you know, things kind of fell into place. Uh, it's an image that he even uses of, of kind of the, the tumblers in a lock falling into place as, as the right key is inserted. That was sort of the experience of reading Orthodoxy for me. It was time, not so much of doubt as hesitancy. Um, and, and what Chesterton did for me was kind of give me a sense of, well, well, well two things. One, a sense of comfort that uh, I didn't need to have all the answers figured out. I'll get to that in a second. But also a, a, a sense of looking at it in a different perspective, that this wasn't something to be anxious about. I certainly had tendencies at the time to scrupulosity and worry about whether I had things right. Um, Chesterton helped to see the wonderful adventure, the romantic adventure of orthodoxy. And that really shaped uh, the way that I approached my faith and, and saw it as not some sort of tedious or, or fretful figuring out of a puzzle, but rather a adventure of discovery, kind of, uh, you know, going into uncharted terrain and uh, <clears throat> finding new and wonderful things. Um, it's particularly one phrase, even in the book Orthodoxy, that I think made the biggest difference in my life. And that's when Chesterton describes finding Christendom as a mother, and he says that the historic Orthodox Christian faith, which he would ultimately come to see in the Catholic Church, um, it wasn't so much that it was a thing, uh, a situation of compiled truths that were there, that it was something that, that gave witness to truths, but rather he discovered it as a truth-telling thing. That single phrase, a truth-telling thing. That was what I needed. That was the message I needed to hear, that I could kind of trust in uh, knowing that the answers would be there and that I could now rest assured and go on this path of discovery and adventure and know that I was sort of hemmed in by uh, these guardrails that were going to prevent me from, from going astray. And that has been the wonderful adventure and romance of orthodoxy in my own life. And how this changed my life is that uh, that having been accomplished, uh, that I could now find myself reposing in and trusting in um, the answers that tradition would provide to me, tradition with a capital T, uh, as I tried to work through the, the finer points of theology and discovery and sometimes inventing my own answers and discovering that the church had got there 1,700 years earlier, right? Very much like Chesterton, as he describes his faith journey in that book. Um, now that I could trust in that, I could now go out on mission because I think, uh, when we receive the gift of faith, we want to give it away. Um, we want to shout this from the rooftops, but there's always that doubt, that niggling feeling of hesitancy that we might have that, uh, well, what if we don't know all the answers? How can we, how can we do this? Because we haven't thought through every possible question and scenario ourselves. Uh, it was that trust in the truth-telling thing of Orthodox Christian faith and, and, and ultimately what I came to find in the magisterium of the Catholic Church, uh, that that gave me the courage to be able to go out and share this with others, not saying that I had all the answers myself, but to come and see with me, um, right? Kind of like Philip uh, uh, meeting Christ, that there's this man who, uh, he's going to tell you everything, um, 
this is what we we find as we go out on mission in the church and so uh that's the gift uh of chesterton to me uh, a reassuring presence uh he himself has been that now in the many years since uh, not only did he teach me that I could repose and trust, repose trust in uh, the church and her wisdom, but uh, I also find that he is also a sure guide and somebody who can help me when I might be going astray or thinking um, through things that maybe need a little prod in the right direction. I open up Chesterton and almost always I find um, a signpost pointing in the right direction. Uh, so I give... Uh, Great thanks to God for this gift of Chesterton, and uh, I hope that I can only uh, pay it forward uh, in some small measure to repay God for the gift that that has meant to me as I seek to share Chesterton and share the gospel with others. I'm Dale Alquist, and G.K. Chesterton did for me what he did for many other people. He completely changed my life. He brought me to the Catholic Church. He made me a better thinker, a better person, a wiser man, a more patient man, a more charitable man. And he inspired me to do some other things that I would not have otherwise done. Obviously starting the Chesterton Society was one of them and starting the first Chesterton Academy was another one. Those things have grown and have had great ramifications so that they have touched the lives of many, many other people. G.K. Chesterton is a good friend of mine. I think he's a saint, but he will change your life.